He didn't care for land work at all. He didn't yeah. care for farming. Just he went to sea. And that was his whole life and his love was the sea. He started out very, very young with that old Captain Cleveland. And Captain Cleveland was a coastal schooner captain too? Oh yeah, just a small he little did. coastal schooner. Josiah Cleveland, his name was. I heard my father tell a story about him. They said, boy, he said his, his wife cooked a Thanksgiving dinner one day. He had his dinner all on the table. And somebody called him up and wanted him to go to Matterboysit to get a load of wood. They were just ready to sit down to the table. Come on, Zeb, he says, we'll go get the wood. And then he says, we'll eat our dinner later. I had to go over here to Matterboysit. It'd probably take him a day maybe to go over there and get, they'd eat when they got back. That's the way he was. Boy, he was a driver, I guess. He said they used to pick up these paving stones, stones they got on the bottom of the ocean. They paved the streets in Nantucket with paving stones that my father and this Captain Cleveland used to take down. And they would be picking up paving stones in the water when it was cold. He said that was the best time to get them because you could, when you went to pick them up, you'd get more than one. They'd be froze together. You'd get more than one stone at a time. But uh, I tell you, he was a tough man, I guess, to work for. And what, how old was Zeb when he got his own boat? Quite young. He had one called the Wilfred Fuller first. Then he had one called the John B. Norris for many, many years. But the eldest went with him. That was the last one he had. He used to bring soft coal from the Pocahontas dock from New Bedford. Loads and loads and loads of soft coal he'd bring in here for Tilton's lumber. And he bought brick for Tilton's lumber yard from Greenport. Loads of brick, bring lumber from all over different places. There's no boats at all come in here anymore. No. See, they all ship by trucks now. We used to bring a lot of road oil from uh, Providence, Rhode Island here. All the oil is used a lot on the roads here. And they brought that in drums, great big drums. He used to say the farmers ought to pay him a commission. Every time he went to Providence to get a load of oil, it rained. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because they loaded with this machine there that they had so they could hook onto the barrels and then heist them on board. But the brick, they used to load them all together by hand. They had planks and they'd wheel them aboard in wheelbarrows, put it on the boat. And then when they unloaded, they used to take seven brick and they'd take them all by hand, the seven brick, and pass them up to the guy on the dock and then they'd put them in trucks. Very, very hard, you know. It would take a couple of days probably to unload that boat, unload the brick. And then they'd bring that soft coal in here a load of that, and they'd have to shovel it into these buckets. They'd have great big buckets, and they'd have to shovel it into those buckets. And then they'd heist it out <clears throat> from the boat onto the trucks, you know. Coal was really the dirtiest job because they put all that soft coal on deck. And brick was hard because they handled all those brick by hand. And there was a lot of hard work to that. Sometimes it might take them a couple of days probably to unload the whole ship. But it was very hard. Handling brick was very hard. And of course, shoveling that coal wasn't easy either. And when they had those coal, big coal tubs, well, probably they'd have three or four men, you know, because they couldn't, they'd be forever and a day with just one man loading those tubs. They had to keep moving to get those trucks loaded and get it out of there, you know. But it was hard work. There wasn't anything easy about it. So I worked with them all the time when I got old enough to go on the boat. I used to steer, cook, and clean. That's about all there was, you know. Except I used to help him when he was taking brick on, and we had a tallium, you know, who would take one brick for somebody that went aboard on a wheelbarrow, and then they'd take one brick off each one the load that went on, and that way they could keep the tally of how many brick they had on by the end of the day, you know, they'd count the tally brick. When we got in port, he'd always take me somewhere, you know, to a zoo or something, and we'd go places together, you know. Most of the places I was to Greenport, we used to go into New York, and we used to go... Uh, to New Bedford quite often to get that coal. And then we used to go to, to New Haven, Connecticut. Then we were out in the harbor, and then these oyster boats would bring the oysters and load them onto our boat. And then we took them down to Chatham. Greenport was nice, but it, it was a very quiet, quiet place. But New Bedford, I think, was about the best place I used to like to go. You could just walk a little ways. You could be up into the to where the stores were and stuff like that. Look at the buildings and stuff. Of course, we had all kinds of different types of buildings than what we got on the island, you know. And of course, my father knew so many people. He'd come down, different people would come down and talk to my father, you know. And I said to my father one time, I said, gee, I said, you must know everybody in the world. Because to me, and after living in Chomark, and having only known a few people, seven or eight people in a day that would come down and talk to him, high cap, and you know. Because there were so many different ones that did know him from all the different years that he'd gone in and out of those ports, you know. If he had a fair wind, he wouldn't go, he wouldn't stop. Most of the time we sailed nights and days too. 
he could do with very little sleep, and he'd maybe get an hour of sleep, and he'd be up, and he'd steer. But lots and lots of nights we sailed all night long. We never stopped. That must have been beautiful sailing in the middle of the oh, night. Oh, yeah, it was. Moonlight nights was really nice. The sea would be really calm sometimes, you know, and sailing along. We would see other boats and see lights away, distance on some shore or something. The moon would be on the water. It was really nice. Oh, no. It was very pretty at night a lot of times.